Today I'm going to be talking about how married people and singles can get unwell together um, and love each other as deeply from the heart as, as Christ commands us in, in Peter, the book of Peter, uh, First Peter, chapter 1, I think it is, or is it chapter 2? I'll have a look in a moment. Um, yeah, so... I'll read that first because the context is a pure heart. Um, so I, I, I that is possible. It's not impossible. And so I just want to um, go through some of the cautions and the the, um, the possibilities of how we can actually love one another without becoming emotionally entangled, etc. And yes, I can speak with authority on this subject. There's no boasting. Because <laughs> the Lord has kept me. And he's faithful and he will always keep me as a single woman. Um, and I'm grateful for that. He'll never allow me to go in, a, in, a, in the wrong direction. And there is a special calling um, in that. Uh, yeah. So I, I, I'll just um, go through some of the things. Okay, but let me find the verse first. It's 1 Peter, chapter 1. And verse 22. Now that you have purified your souls, note like that purify your souls by obedience to the truth so that you have genuine mutual love, love one another deeply from the heart. You have been born anew, verse 23, not perishable, but an imperishable seed through the living and, and enduring word of God. So, first of all, I want to um, mention, point out the fact that this is, if we are to love one another deeply from the heart, it will mean that we have purified our lives. We won't be living lives where we are self-directed or lovers of self. We'll be living lives of sacrifice of, um, uh, yeah, of, of, uh, of being um, self-denying. We'll be going to purify our lives. We won't be into pornography. We won't, um, in fact. We will scarcely feel attracted to another person um, ever, and if we do, we'll deal with it immediately under the gracious hand of the loving God. Um, so that I wanted to point out immediately. If you're not in that place, then please don't listen to the rest of this because you're not ready for it. Um, you must be able to be friends with the opposite gender, no matter how attractive they are, without having any emotional feelings and men you often deceive yourself so be careful um, I've seen that in current college where women said they were absolutely not interested in a man but they were acting as though they were and of course they were they just hadn't acknowledged it to themselves and landed up marrying them so yeah behavior shows isn't it, where where a person is at and what they what they're really doing uh, behavior is very clear like I can always tell when a man's interested in me, um, I've had a lot of it in my life, and um, yeah, I, because of that, I'm able to be more cautious. Um, even when a man is denying it to himself, I know <laughs> because I know the, the um, uh, behaviours that show that a man is interested, and it's very clear. It's not um, there's no fooling a woman. Um, so I just wanted to point out. Some of the uh, ways in which we can interact. We don't have to be Muslims. We don't have to be um, uh, Jews uh, anymore. <laughs> we are not living under the law. We're living under grace. Um, and so we should be able to interact, be friends, meet up for coffee. Um, but only if you're living in the power of the Holy Spirit and are able to be friends without 
any emotional connection or um or physical attraction and i don't know how how that works on a man's side so i'm not gonna talk about that uh, i haven't spoken to men actually um who have been friends with me for years um because that's one of the one of the topics we don't talk about because we need to be we, we're aware of our boundaries and where physical and emotional and topic wise uh, conversation wise um uh, time wise etc etc so i just wanted to go through them to love one another deeply from the heart means to really love somebody um, uh, without emotional connect attachment so um it will be in a sense dispassionate um it'll be something that where you love them you look after them you care for them you um nurture them you support them you whatever but um you don't get emotionally attached to you'll be sad when they leave you'll be sorry to depart from them but there's a certain level where you just don't get emotionally attached and it's partly from <clears throat> uh, not discussing certain topics um and so, so men I, i want you to be really careful because sometimes mm, 99.99% of the men men i know who are not inappropriate in any way shape or form um and and i'll go through that at the moment um we'll never go go further than you know wherever they'll they'll withdraw if they need to and they'll also um not be seeking uh, anything outside of god and outside of their marriage so and i am also an unusual woman so i would i would caution any single woman who's not been um single for about 10 years yet um so only one a woman who's been single for 10 years and has conquered that kind of um attraction and um emotional attachment um by the grace of, of God and believe in me it takes very 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 deep suffering uh, to get to that point so if you prepare to to suffer very deeply to get to that point then you will um and God will keep you it will never be yourself um and I can boast in God because he will always and uh um he's powerful and that's it um but it does take a lot of suffering and it but at the same time it also frees you up significantly because there's no funny business going on you know what i mean uh, there's no um emotional attachment or um physical attraction or anything you just neutral um and it's one of the most freeing things you could ever experience in your entire life um and John Stott knew it it's not only women who can feel it it's John Stott knew it um yeah um there are at the single men women who uh yes um i think in some senses you you always open to the possibility of her but um, and then then maybe you know the lord will enable you to feel something but really i i just um think that uh yeah it's a, it's wonderful because you can interact and and do business with people without any issues whatsoever no matter how attractive you are or the other person is it's just it, uh it's just a relief actually um to have none of that nonsense um one of my friends um mark was like that 
He was, um, yeah, he was married. And we were really, really good friends at college, um, Bible college. And I used to go and visit his home. And I was kind of friends with his wife. Um, not as deeply as Mark, because obviously we weren't sharing every day together. But, um, but yeah, I, he's not the kind of person I would have been attracted to. But that's beside the point. Um, yeah, he, he he was a great friend, a very supportive and very kind, very loving. Yeah, I even went on holiday with him and his wife. I think his baby as well, I think, you know, to his parents' house. It's really lovely. So it is possible, and I've had many friends, and probably not as close as that, um, who've been married since then. Um, but I also have some precautions in place, and that's what I want to talk about today is the precautions um, where the Bible says don't give opportunity to the flesh where the Bible says don't give opportunity to the flesh it just means that we we still have the flesh active in us we must never be naive um, and so we put these sort of hedges or boundaries or um, things in place to stop us from getting to that point, to a point where we're going to fall in anyway. So um, it's not a matter of leaving him, it's a matter of loving Jesus and making him our all because we love him, don't we? Don't you? <laughs> I do. Um, and uh, so what we do is we put some boundaries in place and boundaries, uh, inside boundaries, inside boundaries. So that we've got this massive chasm between us and, um, well, between me and a married man, there will always be this huge chasm. And it's like a, it's an awareness of this mental, emotional, spiritual chasm that I can't even begin to try and cross because it's just there, and physical as well. Um, in my mind, in my emotions, and my interactions um, and there's also a deep 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 respect not only for him uh, but for his wife um, and love for her and um, desire for her not to be hurt or demeaned in any way um, she actually takes priority in my emotions when i'm engaging with another man um, i always have her at the table when i'm talking to him I always have her, in my mind at least, <laughs> I always have her present. Um, and I imagine the look of hurt on her eyes if I were even to say something slightly inappropriate. Um, I keep that in front of my eyes always. So that's one of the mental ways I, I find helpful. Um, and I also look at the children and I look at their their eyes and I look and I say, no, how could I do that to them? Um, so if we're not self-centered, we will care. Um, yeah. And then, um, what else? Oh, uh, yeah. So if when I've been friends with men, I've been able to meet up with them for coffee, no, no problem, as long as they're white doesn't mind I've ever been able to message them no problem as long as their wife doesn't mind um, and even though there's a slight admiration on their part it kind of doesn't interfere with you know the friendship um, should I say show slight admiration I don't know uh, you know the heart sometimes people can hide it and then actually be quite uh, enamored um, and you only find out through tiny, tiny little things um, like uh, um, it's better to be slightly too careful than to fall um, to put yourself in a position where flesh takes over um, instead of the spirit so of course we pray every day that's one of the first things we do, isn't it? That the Lord will keep us. Not that I do that every day, because I don't encounter 
men on a daily basis. I, men are men, and I don't judge them. I, I don't know what they uh, what they like. Um, yeah, um, but I think that um, uh, when we're living by the power of the Holy Spirit, it is possible to love other people. Uh, when we've got those boundaries in place, and I've said that before, and I shall repeat it again and again. Um, and when we have, when we are dying to self constantly, so um, boundaries are mental. I've mentioned that. Uh, physical, I don't inter like. I scarcely even shake hands. I've learned, at least in South Africa, it's not a wise idea. Um, and then. Um, Spiritual, uh, yeah, that's a difficult. I think spiritually, I share things simply deeply, and other people share things spiritually with me, and um, that's. Yeah, I, I, don't, I don't see anything, any business type um, stuff. Sometimes even emotional stuff from my side, and uh, just a little bit uh, isn't an issue. But um, from the other side, um, I never, I never share with. That's a boundary. They don't cross. They don't share their difficulties, and they don't share their joys, their personal joys, especially with family. They don't get too intimate. So that's a that's a boundary. It's wise not to cross. Um, you just discuss, uh, you know, impersonal things. Um, you could discuss that you like ice cream, or uh, you know, maybe um, more factual instances about holidays or something when you're small, or things that you would discuss with anybody. Um, but nothing too personal. Um, uh, Sometimes you deal with pastors, and I think that's not a good thing for a pastor. I, I truly think that there should be women workers, women pastors, or women in the congregation. Um, I think that's a, a wise thing. I don't think women should be sharing with men. I know that there is a need for something like that, but that's, that's beside the point. Um, I, I, I do understand the need for um, the role model of a, of a good man. So there's emotional boundary physical boundary, I don't engage in physical contact at all, as I've mentioned, um, emotional, mental, and I, I guess, you know, if you find yourself becoming a bit attached to a woman, um, in some senses, you, you do need to, a single woman, you do need to withdraw as a married man, just remember that some single women uh, draw the attention of an awful lot of men, and, you know, for her to have to people avoiding her isn't healthy um, it's very she doesn't she won't feel comfortable um, it's not nice it's really unpleasant in England I could be friends with lots of uh, men and couples without a problem uh, but in South Africa I find it very difficult except for black people um, I haven't found that issue at all um, unless I'm just being blind, <laughs> but I haven't seen a thing. Uh, one little slight um, problem. Um, of course, you, you don't want to be alone in a room with a woman. Our God does keep us, and uh, if wives keep on praying for their husbands, it's not, they're not going to fall very easily, because men on the whole do love their wives and their children and put them first above their own needs and their own desires and everything in their own comfort. So yeah, I just wanted to ask that you really, it is possible, but you do have to train yourself into doing it and always be aware. Um, and if you're in ministry, be aware that you're under more attack, especially in this area. Um, nobody wants to become like Ravi Zacharias, sure, it's terrible. Uh, the biggest fraud the world has ever seen. Um, of course, oh, clothing. Clothing, of course, you don't want to wear. You know, women don't want to wear um, clothing that shows every nook and cranny. Men, that, we're not visual. Um, 
but there's one in like seven billion men who, who might uh, cause a problem if you, if you go shirtless or something like that. Um, really, the rest of you can, you know, we, we're just not visual. We could do. Um, but of course, we want to keep away from um, books that, that cause problems or, you know, it doesn't even have to be a pornographic book. It can just be a love story that could cause too many, many problems. Of course, the wrong kind of idea about men can't it um, so uh, yeah I can plant ideas in our minds instead of uh, focusing on the Lord so sometimes those things aren't helpful uh, women dressing you know that's a complicated issue because sometimes you know people's shapes don't take to various modest <laughs> clothing it makes it all worse so yeah. anyway i won't go into that a woman can go into that with women um yeah and uh of course you may want to consider whether a bikini is really the best thing to wear at the beach um, whether it really glorifies god and, and exhibits modesty or not anyway take care then um and uh i do Ask the Lord to bless us and bless his, his um, uh, blessings to you uh, and make it powerful in your life. Take care.